From Southern California, this is The Circle of Insight, a show about everything in psychology. Hear the latest in news and views on psychology. Our motto is simple. Wherever there is psychology involved, we are there. And now, here's your host of The Circle of Insight, Carlos Vasquez. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We have a great show for you. Today, we're going to be exploring fitness tips with Dr. Patricia. Dr. Patricia wrote this great book, Fit Kids Revolution. Dr. Patricia is the founder and medical director for Dr. Reba's Health Club, a community-based organization designed to prevent and treat nutrition-related health problems in children and their families through a variety of health-promoting programs in California. Dr. Patricia attended Boston University School of Medicine and completed her residency in general pediatrics at Children's Hospital of Orange County. Welcome to The Circle, Dr. Patricia. This is a great, great part, too, because I really want to get some of the answers now to overcome this issue of childhood obesity. I think it's amazing how many children you mentioned in the last show that you've seen just in Orange County alone, I think it was 10,000? No, well, there's 10,000 that, that are living below the poverty level that, that should be coming to my program. That's, yeah, and that's, that's amazing. And, that's, and they're not. They're not even getting there. So there's, there's a huge need. And that actually brings me to a question. Uh, how many do you think in general? And is there a connection with poor socioeconomic environments? There's a, there is a definitely a much higher prevalence. We did uh, we worked the, with one of the school districts and we helped with their after school programming, trying to make it more healthy. And um, but it was an after school program for children living um, uh, below the poverty level. There was no like it, they weren't screened for obesity. But when we went in and to get their pre and post testing, we found that about fifty percent of the kids were overweight or obese. Fifty percent. And that's much higher than the national wow. averages. And so that's why you you know you do know that 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 it but it, it crosses all socioeconomic barriers. And um, but we do see a higher prevalence in in our, in our poor children. But it's everywhere. Now I know the last show we talked about the problems, the future implications. Uh, the diabetes it can cause, the liver disease it can cause, the likelihood of getting these diseases later in the future even more so because of being obese as a child. Um, what can we do about it? Oh, there's so much to be done. And, and it doesn't matter what happened yesterday. I talk to families every day. Just focus on today and moving forward. So if, if things weren't going right then, it doesn't matter. Um, the nice thing is children are pliable. Their um, families are eager to ad adapt healthy lifestyles and so forth. Once they understand what you know, what's missing. So they, you know, starting to serve, uh, getting away from sugary drinks and starting to serve water and white milk at your meals and snacks. White and that milk? doesn't mean chocolate milk. Those chocolate milks <laughs> at school have five teaspoons of sugar in them. Those little chocolate milks. So five teaspoons? I know, there's so much sugar in them. I have a rule at my practice. There's there's only three times that you can have chocolate milk. <laughs> I tell the kids, I say, one, if, um, if you ski for at least half a day, knock yourself out. Um, two, if you're on a sleigh ride or you go ice skating for more than two hours. And three, if the, the clauses invite you over for milk and cookies at the North Pole, then knock yourself out because Mrs. Claus, I'm sure, has great recipes for hot chocolate. But those are special occasions, and it just shouldn't be an everyday thing at school. You know, that's and cool. so that's the one thing I don't put a lot on kids. I really want the adults around them to serve healthy food, but I have a hard time getting the schools to be as healthy as I'd like them to be. So that's the one thing I do put on kids is to choose white milk at school or for the parents don't even just pack their lunch and just give them water. Water is so good for them and it, we need, we all need to drink more water. Is there, is there, you think there's an issue with uh, drinking water for children? Anything well, I get parents that? all the time, well, he won't drink water, you know, and I'm like, you know, seriously if there's no juice and no you know sports drinks and soda and you'd be surprised what people do when they're thirsty <laughs> you know I always try to get it back like you know how, how you know just think about the natural foods that are around when you were a caveman and if you can surround your kid with those foods water you know fruits vegetables nuts seeds you know naturally um, produced you know uh, proteins that children are going to be so much more healthy. Do you think it may be a, as well as a parenting, given too much control over to the child or don't want to say no to the child? Well, I just think that we just don't know the psychology of feeding kids. And for me, that's the big hallmark on, on, on my treatment program. And that's where we find the biggest pathology. And, you know, I treat obesity, but I also treat children that are failing to thrive or underweight. Because the psychology of fe feeding kids, no matter what their size is, is the same. And I'll tell you, there's something called the division of responsibility. And that was done by Ellen Satter. I did not create it, but I'm standing on her shoulders and I've tried to take her concepts <laughs> on steroids. But basically, it is that there is a feeding relationship. You know, kids don't eat out of like a 
you know, a whim. It, there is a relationship between the parent or the caregiver and the child. And you have to know each person's job. So the parent is responsible for what's being served. So you can't put your hand on your shoulder well, he's, he wants Cheetos. It, well, who bought the Cheetos? You know, because he's five, he doesn't have a job. You know, so make sure the soda, the Cheetos, all that stuff or whatever, cheese puffs will keep this um, non-judgmental. But the, we don't want to have those foods um, around the kids. So what is being served is on the parent when it's being served. Children should be offered food about every two to three hours. They have small stomachs. Mm -hmm. They may be hungry. They might not be hungry, but they should be surrounded by food. We don't want them going too long without food because then they'll get food insecure and they'll tell, tend to hoard and hide and binge on food if they've gone too long. It's a survival mechanism. Who You don't want to be in a famine. And so, and I think parents are responsible for setting a, a, a good tone to the meal. You know, this is not the time to pick a fight with your husband. This is not the time to bring up bad grades. You know, this is the time for the family to get together. And this is your base camp as a family. You want to make, you know, wow, I like the way you had good manners with the lady at the bank today. And wow, you sat and did your homework immediately after school. I'm so proud of you. And really label praises about your child, not on what they're eating or how much they're eating, but on who they are as a person. Mm -hmm. And that really helps um, fuel the fire and it helps with the picky eaters because classically the picky eaters and the obese kids are on the same table and the picky eaters are they're chasing them around with a spoon trying to get them to eat anything and the obese ones like look I'm being good I'm eating so the messages are really important for all children in all sizes so and then the child is responsible for if they're gonna eat and how much so as much as we'd love to say, eat your green beans and then you can have your ice cream or, or have more of this or don't, you can't, you have to let it go. It's all about the frozen song. You've got to just let it go. You put that healthy food out there, you put a variety of different foods and let the child self-regulate. It's a really important skill. And so we don't, I don't limit any portions, but I want parents to have, you know, fruits and vegetables on the plates, you know, out there all the time and not fried foods and, and more natural foods, 100% whole grains, not processed ones and not sugary drinks. And we've got all these healthy foods out there. What are they going to eat? Like 15 pieces of broccoli or nine oranges? You know, you're going to eat what you tend to need if it all has uh, nutrition in it and you're able to eat freely, you know, as opposed to feeling, you know, having it be a food war and the child doesn't eat and then he goes and sneaks food um, or he go or as and if the dynamics are bad when they're young then they're like I'm eating at Jimmy's house and you're like no 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 you want Jimmy to want to eat at your house does he have a you know a piercing does he have a tattoo does he have parents what's going on with this Jimmy guy is Jimmy a guy or girl you want that kid at your table you want to have that that life and if you and if if the food is a battlefield your children are not going to want to eat with you and it's protective. Children that eat with their families, they're less likely to be involved with drinking, drugs, early sexual encounters. It is very protective for children to eat as a family. It's amazing how we went back to the basics. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why it's basics. easy what I do. I don't put anyone on strong medications. And we have over an 80% success rate in the last two years. We That's have fantastic. 84.5 and 79.5 are the two, two last years, which is amazing because I have the toughest cases in the county. The other thing I like about her, look at the passion she has. She really does. I mean, she's really going to take care of your child. A uh, question on how much time on TV? Should we regulate that? Yes. So that's, that's another thing. Get TVs out of the bedroom. Children who have a TV in their bedroom um, are more likely to have problems. Um, we want to get, I, I usually say limit it to one hour a day, TV, Game Boy, computer, or screen time. Okay. One hour and now, I mean, my daughter's coming home. She's in fourth grade and she has to do homework on the iPad. So I'm really trying to control that. And when they do have screen time and they are watching TV, it's nice to maybe sit together as a family and watch something together. Or the, you know, because the, um, and, you know, trying to get through those commercials. It's, it's not just the inactivity of sitting there. It's the commercials and the, and, and the advertisements and all those other things that play into this obesity epidemic as well. Now, I know in part one, we talked about some of the issues that obesity brings, and we didn't get time to talk about the story of John Gabriel. But I want to take us away for a second from all the wonderful tips that you're giving us. We're going to go back to see what happens when things can go wrong in trying to rectify a situation. And you mentioned John Gabriel. He's, in his, he's on the book here. He co-authored the book. Yes. And he went to a fat camp? He, um... What he, is a fat camp first? I know. <laughs> Um, it's interesting because I have a camp for kids over the summer and we call it Fit Club and it's just fun. <laughs> I like that name better. And uh, there's no restriction or anything. But um, but yeah, I mean, his 
uh, his family was well-intentioned. There was not a lot known, and he and his brother were sent to fat camp to lose weight. And they would, and then they'd gain it back, and then some every every school year in between. Um, but it was such a restrictive thing. They were counting calories in, calories in, calories out. That's an old motto. It doesn't work. It's all about offering nutrition and letting people self-regulate. That's where the money is right now. And um, when they were restricted a certain amount of calories, well, it got to the point where there was a black market at the at the camp. He'll tell you stories about, uh, you know, for cookies. You know, they'd go for like five bucks a thing, and he was bullied once and beat up once because he had bought one for five bucks and some bigger kid wanted it from him. So it's just it's it's scary. There was a black market for cookies. There was a black market for cookies at fat camp, and so that's what happens when kids get restricted. And that's why I say, you know, make your families healthy food at home keep you know sit down enjoy meals together and then you go to a birthday party just don't eat just let them go or you go to a wedding don't go to the kids table and go honey you can't have the root beer you can't have the cake that's not where it's at it's the everyday stuff it's what you buy in your pantry and that's why you don't bring that other stuff home because trust me there's a lot of opportunities out there for the other junk to trickle in we're coming into the holidays we're getting you know all types of things going on halloween my daughter she goes out and trick-or-treats and she has the, the candy do we do you know pumpkin cookies and all these other things no and do we eat healthy you know we make the pumpkin seeds i make pumpkin soup we enjoy the season we we do more exercise during that time but i don't make one one day a big deal because if you do those kids it's just like putting them in fat camp then all of a sudden that's all they want you know gotcha. and then they obsess about that you know and it, it's it's a nightmare now you said he gained the weight back when you left the fat camp um, was it, what was the rebound reason for that? Was it because he was deprived of it? Yes, it's like saying don't breathe. Okay. And so by, when you do, your body's like, oh, I was just in a famine and there might be another one. And so you store up again. And that's what's the problem with dieting. I had a, a little boy that came in and we wrote about it in the book. He came in into my office, he was three years old, he was 83 pounds, so he's 50 pounds overweight. Three years old. Three years old, okay. He walked in my office with a measuring cup and I thought, oh my gosh, how cute, does he want to be a chef? And the mom said, no, the dietician we saw before you said he could only have carbs that would fit in this cup. And so here he was, it went from she was supposed to portion control with this cup to he was panhandling. He was bringing it everywhere to see if he could get his next ration of carbs. So he had been overweight, wow. then he became morbidly obese just based on the fact that he had been restricted. And that's why, you know, I'm like, buy 100% whole grains and then let them have as much as they want. And, you know, like I said, what, you're gonna cut apples and, you know, apples and peanut butter and celery and, what, what are they gonna have too much of that? Your jaws are gonna hurt before you eat too much <laughs> celery and peanut butter and, and apples, you know. That's interesting, that's, uh, yeah, it's amazing, a little measuring cup walking around. It is, and that's why John ended up getting up to 420 pounds and he lost 200 and, or, he lost 240 pounds and he's kept it off and he didn't do it with any dieting he has he did it with adding you know natural foods and eating you know every few hours you know getting in those snacks at 10 and 3 which everyone all us adults think we can just power through without with coffee or talk about how we're overweight ourselves and the kids are all hearing this and picking up on these bad ideas yeah, we have to be really be careful as parents now, you were saying something else about eating every two or three hours that applies to children as well? Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I like to make sure children are offered and no longer than every four hours. Um, and that's just, you know, they should have a breakfast within about a half hour of getting up and they should be offered that snack at 10 and 3 and lunch and dinner. And, you know, people always, they want to give them something light and they're giving them cereal. Most of the cereals are processed and yeah. just junk. I'd much rather have, you know, start each meal and snack, adding a fruit and a vegetable to it and then adding other foods. So Natural fruity pebbles foods. doesn't count, huh? No. <laughs> no. no. Um, so let's recap a little bit. We have eating healthier. Mm -hmm. So eating more vegetables and fruits. Yes. Throughout uh, the day. Would you agree less access to snacks that are bad for you or having them less at home? Yeah, I just wouldn't have them at my house. Mm -hmm. And then and then as they pop up in a party situation and once in a while, don't make a big deal about it. Make a big deal about because it. Because you don't want that your child to be, oh, everyone else out there, you know, it's like, it's all good. <laughs> Whatever, have as much as you want, you know, instead of trying to always control it. You know, don't have that locked thing at your house. A lot of people think that. And the kids, they just want to be in whatever that locked cupboard is that has all the junk food in. That's all they want, you know. And so if it's not there, it's not there. That's you know, if they nature, open yeah. it up and it's apples and oranges and carrots, what are they going to eat? That's all they, that's all they have to choose from. If they're hungry, they'll eat. That's great. What about sports? We increase the amount of, that, that's kind of been a debate lately, parents putting their children in too many sports. 
you know, we got soccer, then you got to play softball right after that, then you got to play basketball. Oh, yeah, and then you have to do your homework at 9 o'clock at night. Um, what's, the, what's, what's the healthy balance between putting your children in sports? It's really hard. I mean, I do, I love um, getting children involved with sports. I was in, involved with sports. It teaches you leadership. It, te it keeps you healthy. You surround yourself with other people with common goals and so forth. But children do tend to get overscheduled. So just making sure that they can get their sleep in and that, you know, they, then things may have to be foregone. But if you're exercising every day, you're going to be sick less often. You're going to do better in school. You're going to be able to concentrate better. And so a lot of the parents are like, he has to come home and do his homework. I'm like, well, if he goes and, you know, if you go play at the park for an hour and then come home, he'll probably do his homework much more effectively. Mm -hmm. Or if he goes to basketball That's practice and then does it. So yes, keep an eye on overscheduling, but getting kids involved with fun activities that get them to move, I mean, that's a no-brainer. And we all need to get our kids out and moving more. It's the ones that are staying in and working on the computers and watching TV and, you know, that... That, that's when you start getting into these very inactive kids that then they lose their confidence in the sports and then it's harder to build up. And you said one hour a day max on TV or games. Yes, all together screen time. And then and focus on when you're eating together as a family, focus on the family, focus on the good stuff. Make everyone feel loved. You know, talk about your highs and lows of the day. You know, make that a, you know, leave your sword bring your I'm heart sorry. to the table <laughs> and just and just love your family. And, and that's what we all want anyways, you know. And leave Parents, leave your phone off the table. Turn off the TV. This is your one time. I mean, how long is the meal going to take? 20, 30 minutes? And this is the most important thing you can do for your children. And how long are you going to have your children around? You know, yeah, and they... you want them to come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, not just for the money. Um, last thing in the last minute here, you work, uh, you just opened and started a nonprofit. Yes, I mean, all my work has always been um, with the poor, but um, as we've gotten more and more out there, we're um, there's just such a need and um, for me it's like it's just such I don't want to see a 400 pound child we've got to prevent this issue we've got so we go into the preschools and we do all kinds of programs I've gotten funding through the Children and Families Commission of Orange County since 2002 they've been my wow. biggest proponent Hoke Hospital St. Joseph's Hospital Wells Fargo Kaiser I mean I have been Fantastic. getting amazing support throughout the county and so we have been because I'm a I am hands-on I am the doctor I do see the patients and also run the program and my my um, team um, we it's we've been under someone else's nonprofit and now we've started I've assembled a board and we started serving kids hope and Carrie Walsh um, Jennings who's an Olympic volleyball player oh, yeah. has been a friend of mine we worked out for years together she's been supporting our cause and um, we are having we're having great uh, um, success and we need help because I get the problem and we need to figure out how to scale our solutions out into the rest of the nation, the rest of the world. We well, heard the call, so where do we go mm -hmm. to help? So servingkidshope.org, net, you know, you name it, we've, <laughs> so we've got them all. Or, and if you want, like, just recipe ideas, Dr. Patricia MD, and if you need help feeding your children, um, Fit Kids Revolution, it's on Amazon, or you can just go to the websites and you can buy it that way. But um, we are really just trying to, I can't see everybody, and but we can certainly... Um, get the message out to families and doctors and teachers and anyone who's, who's interfacing with children who needs support in, in this obesity epidemic. Well, we truly appreciate the effort you're giving and the wonderful things you're doing. Thank you so much for being on The Circle. Oh, thank you for having me. And you out there, please, Kids Revolution, if you have children, if you know of children, nephews, nieces that need help, this is where you go. Fit Kids Revolution, you can find her, Dr. Patricia Reba, R-I-B-A. Thank you again for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. Remember, our motto is simple. Wherever there's psychology involved, we are there. See you next time, everyone.